This case takes place in the United States of America on the 15th of June, 2023. Chad Doerman was a 32-year-old man who lived in Monroe Township, a small settlement with a population of around 7,000 people. It is described as one of the safest places in the whole of America, which of course makes it a great place to settle down and raise a family. And this was the case for Chad and his family, although he would soon commit one of the worst crimes in the history of Ohio, and a crime that would shake Monroe to its very core. Chad lived in a house on Laurel Linsdale Road with his 34-year-old wife Laura. The couple had three children together, Clayton 7, Hunter 4, and Chase 3. Laura also had a daughter from a previous relationship, a teenager named Alexis who lived with the couple. Alexis loved her three brothers very much, and she can be seen photographed with them right here. The three brothers were described as inseparable, with very cheeky and funny personalities. Neighbours who knew the family observed that Chad was a rather aggressive and angry person. In fact, people would later recall that they couldn't really remember a time seeing him in a good mood. He always seemed to be on the edge, and would frequently shout at his family. On the 15th of June 2023, Chad went to work, as he usually would on a Thursday, although on this day, he returned home earlier than expected. He entered the home and spoke with his wife Laura. He told her to accompany him to the bedroom for a nap and asked his three sons to come along too. His stepdaughter Alexis stayed in the living room and watched TV. The five went into the bedroom and laid down, with Laura and their three boys drifting off to sleep. However, a few minutes after, Chad got up and he began walking towards his gun safe. He opened it up and pulled out his 22 caliber rifle. Chad loaded the magazine and placed the magazine into the rifle. Chad then shot his son Hunter twice. Horrified and shocked, Laura jumped to her feet and she began administering aid to Hunter, whilst telling her other two boys to run. Of course, Alexis heard the commotion and was likely terrified. However, she still went to see what was going on. She saw Clayton running but he was running through the back door of the home which led onto the field, making him an easy target for Chad. As it was too late for him to turn around, Alexis screamed, telling her brother to keep running away, as she witnessed Chad begin to follow him outside. Chad took aim and fired a shot into Clayton, knocking him to the ground. Alexis watched in horror as Chad walked towards him. For a moment though, Chad looked up and turned, looking at Laura who had just come outside to see where Clayton was. He then aimed his gun down at Clayton and fired as Laura was forced to watch. Laura immediately began trying to administer aid to her son. Upon seeing Clayton being killed, Alexis rushed inside the home, looking to protect her last brother. She grabbed Chase, who was the youngest brother, and picked him up in an attempt to flee, but Chad was already in pursuit of them. As she made her way up the road leading away from the house, Chad was able to catch up. He aimed the rifle at Alexis and told her to put Chase down. Chad then aimed at his son's head and pulled the trigger, but the weapon was out of ammunition. Chase then ran to his mother Laura, who was in the yard desperately trying to save Clayton. Alexis also ran. She did her best to alert passers-by as to what was happening. She was screaming down the street, telling everyone that her father was killing her brothers before running towards the fire department. This was the 911 call that was placed by a local of the town. It is incredibly chilling to hear. 911, where's your emergency? <laughs> um, I am, I'm, uh, there's a girl uh, running down the street. Like, killing everyone and her family. Um, it's on the corner of uh, where there's a body shop in the fire department. Do you know what road this is? Okay, what's your name? Give it into the fire department. What's your name? My, do you know what road this is? Laura Lindell Road. what? It's Laura Lindell Road. Okay, and what did the female say to you? And she says that her stepfather is killing everybody in her house. I did. I'm call I'm on the phone with them right now. Can you say how or 
what was happening. I asked, her, I asked her to get in the car with me, and she said she couldn't leave her family. But she, I think she ran to the fire department. So she went to the fire station? What did she look like? She's a, a she, she's probably a young teenager, probably like 15, uh, six, 16 maybe, with long blonde hair. Um, and they say she has a black dog. I, I don't know about no baby. She said she just couldn't leave her family. But I see a car running around. I'm sorry? Do you see anything from the house? All I, I, well, so I drove down the road a little bit, so I was afraid that I was going to get shot myself since I interacted with her face-to-face. -face. Um, so I, I'm just about, like, uh, maybe three houses down. Um, but she's, like, waiting at the corner. I don't know what she's doing, but I kind of still see her in the corner. Okay, we have help on the way. Thank you so Dark much. Dark gray. Okay, all right. Anything else, call us back, okay, and steer clear of the area at this time. Chad attempted to pull Chase away from Laura, but she refused and fought back. This resulted in Chad biting Laura. Laura desperately tried to pull the gun away from Chad. She managed to grab the barrel of the weapon, but as she did this, she placed her thumb over where the bullet exits. Chad then pulled the trigger, resulting in Laura's thumb being badly injured. After being badly bitten and losing her thumb, Laura fell to the ground in pain and dropped Chase. Chase was now on the ground and the rifle had been reloaded. Chad shot his last son point blank in the head. Chad picked up all three of his boys and placed them next to each other by the side of the house. By this time, the police had been called and they were well on their way. As Chad waited for the police, he sat on the side soup of the home and calmly watched as his wife Laura made attempts to resuscitate her three boys. These attempts were sadly futile. The injuries they had received were catastrophic. After a few minutes, the police arrived on the scene. What I'm about to play is the footage of Chad's arrest. Where's he at? Get them right here, right here. You got them on the porch. We've right? asked not to last place we've been told. You show me your hands, Joe! Stand up and Stand walk, up. walk towards us! Stand up now! Walk towards us! Stand up with your hands up! Stand up now! Chad Dorman, Chad Dorman. Hey. I, I know, but we can't take... Hey. You're first page and he's not complying. You know he's a shooter, shoot him. We gotta find cover first. We ain't no good if we ain't safe or so. <laughs> Show us your hands, hands now! Stand up! Stand up! What are you doing, man? Hey, pretty copy all this. Can I roll over? I ain't gonna hurt you. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hurt nobody. You got anything on you? No, I ain't got nothing, man. Phone, that's it. I'm mad. I ain't, I ain't nothing. Just make sure that dog don't come out. I don't think he'll bite you. Just don't reach for him and try to grab him and pet him. All right. He won't bite you. What's going on, man? Nothing. Uh, can I stand up? It's kind of uncomfortable. I'm gonna get you I ain't gonna here do nothing. I ain't running away. You can do whatever you want with me.
Here. You the only one else inside the house? What? You the only one else inside yeah, the house? Yeah, yeah. Sit down right uh, here. My, my daughter, she ran over to the fire department. Sit down. Uh, it's my stepdaughter. Put him in the cage. What you may have picked up on, and what I found to be incredibly strange, is that despite killing his three sons in such a brutal way, Chad was very calm. He even showed concerns for his dogs while being arrested, telling the officers that they wouldn't bite as long as they didn't touch them. Why would he show concern for dogs after committing such a crime? He also seemed to be fully aware of his actions, telling the police that he was sober and that he should be arrested. Laura was treated for her wounds that she sustained at the hands of Chad. She also had to anxiously wait for confirmation at the hospital that her sons had passed away, which to even think about is absolutely heartbreaking. Laura was eventually given the news that she likely already knew to be true, but didn't want to believe. Her three sons were deceased. Alexis has unsurprisingly suffered an enormous amount of psychological damage from what she saw on that day. In court documents, it is stated that she is struggling a great deal to cope with the deaths of her beloved brothers. Chad's father, Keith Dewerman, was questioned by the media. They asked him if his son showed any prior signs that he was capable of such a horrendous crime. But Keith said that he and his wife, Gloria, are still trying to comprehend how their son, Chad, could have killed his children. They told the media that they have no answers as to why he did this. They did go on to say, There was something going on in his life that he couldn't handle anymore. I can't talk to him. They aren't letting me talk to him so I don't have any answers. He's probably hid a lot of stuff from me. Keith insisted that his son had no criminal record and no history of mental illness. He had just visited Chad a week before the murders, and he said that Chad seemed somewhat normal. Although, this is only a half-truth. Chad was not convicted, but he was charged for attacking and choking his own father in 2010. The case was ultimately dismissed, apparently after Chad's father failed to appear as a prosecution witness. Chad pleaded not guilty to domestic violence on the 26th of July 2010, and the case was dismissed on the 26th of August of that same year. But Keith contests this, and states that the story was wrong and the judge dismissed the case. Chad was questioned by the police, and he was asked to give his motives and reasons for the shocking crime. And he gave a rather sinister confession. He gave a statement during an audio and video recorded interview, during which he admitted to have been thinking about shooting his sons since October. He told the police that he hadn't slept in three or four days leading up to the murders, because the thoughts of having to kill his sons were so heavy on him. The news of the murders, along with Chad's strange and disturbing confession, spread rapidly online and throughout the world. People just couldn't fathom why anyone could do something so cruel, especially to their own children. A hearing was held, which set Chad's bill at 20 million. This amount of money was a record for the state. However, people were still unhappy that a bill was even granted, despite it being a rather large amount of money. They felt that the fact a bond was even given was an insult to Laura and her three boys. Evil, I think, is the only word that really can describe what we heard today. Now, Chad Dorman, like you said, went in front of a judge here at the Claremont County Municipal Court around 10 this morning. Now, prosecutors say that this is the worst crime that they have ever seen, and they push to make sure that Dorman will not be able to get out of jail anytime soon. The trauma that this man has inflicted on his family the community, law enforcement, first responders, and all of the rest of us who have any idea what's going on here is unspeakable. There's been a full admission in this case, Judge. The case is still new. Uh, we're still discovering facts. But the evil horror of what we know is impossible to process. In an act of just incomprehensible cruelty, the father that stands before you lined up his three young boys, and he executed them in his own home with a rifle. They were ages three, four, and seven, Judge. In an act of desperation to save her children, the mother at some point grabbed the gun that father was wielding to attempt to protect them. We know that one of the boys was able to flee 
into a field near the home. And again, we know from his admission, father hunted that boy down, drug him back to the property, and executed him in front of witnesses. To make things even more disturbing, Judge, this was no haphazard act. Again, by his own admission, he planned the act on a whim. He's confessed to what I believe is the worst crime, at least I hope, that I'll see in my lifetime. I hope it's the worst fact pattern that ever comes before this court. Chad's confession would soon change. The defense attorneys working for Chad are claiming that the authorities violated his constitutional rights by questioning him without a lawyer. A motion launched to suppress evidence was filed by Chad's attorneys. They claimed that Chad requested a lawyer following his arrest and that this was rejected by the police. And after rejecting his request, investigators continued to question him for several hours, where Chad confessed to the murders. Chad's attorneys have stated in their appeal that they want everything he said during his entire interrogation thrown out as the investigators violated his constitutional rights from the outset. They went on to say that Chad was never presented with a written copy of his rights. The detective also never asked Chad if he wants to waive those rights. The judge set a hearing on the motion to suppress, and this was scheduled for the 2nd of February 2024. However, I couldn't find any further information about it. During the legal proceedings, Chad pleaded not guilty to the murder of his three boys, a plea that no one really expected. The prosecutor overseeing the case wants the death sentence for Chad, and the fact that Chad pleaded not guilty to the crime could very well lead to a death sentence. But, if he is not to accept a plea, a trial will occur. This will lead to Laura having to sit in court and testify against Chad, reliving the absolute worst day of her life, and to speak about how her boys were killed in cold blood right in front of her. During some of the proceedings, Chad could be seen crying. People online were outraged by the tears that Chad cried during the hearing. They believed them to be crocodile tears, an attempt to try and garner some kind of sympathy from the jury. However, it is apparent that there is absolutely no sympathy for Chad. The prosecution wants the harshest possible punishment for him, and are hoping that he at least never sees the light of day again. People have speculated that Chad will change his plea to guilty and enter a plea deal for a lesser sentence, perhaps in order to possibly escape the death sentence although only time will tell. The trial is set to take place on the 8th of July, 2024. It is widely believed that Chad purposely didn't kill his wife, so she would have to suffer far more alive and mourn for her three boys. An unbelievably cruel thing to do. It does certainly seem that this is what Chad set out to do. He had every opportunity to kill Laura, but he chose not to. The case of Clayton, Hunter and Chase is by far one of the most heartbreaking cases I have ever seen, and likely will ever see. The fear that those three must have felt in their final moments is unbelievably horrific to even think about. One can only hope that Laura and Alexis get the help they need during these times, but of course, it can never change what happened. <laughs> <laughs>